T.M. Mathis, your global indie author distributor, and I hope that you've had a great and glorious week. We are in the midst of my second series, and this one is called The Greatest Story Ever Told. This one is called Oh, the Blood, okay? And I want you to know that because of the holiday season, I thought that this would be a good, excuse me, a good title because we know that this is the time of celebration for our Lord and Savior. We know that we have the abilities that we have because of the blood that he shed for us. And I know that during this time, we have a lot of um, sadness. We have people who, who have passed away um, tragically or just, you know, because of illness or just because of unforeseen occurrences. And so we want to definitely remember those people in prayer. Had a coworker who lost um, her husband, so sending up a definite prayer for her. Have met a young lady um, this week that needs definite prayer. Um, she is going through some life challenges and some struggles, so we lift her up. Just the ability that we got up today is a blessing. Just the um, ability to, to wake up in, in your right mind is a blessing today. So we give God the glory, the praise, and the honor. We thank you for the covering of the blood and everything that that means. I know for, you, for me, the cross is life. And I cling to it with everything I have because without him, I just don't know who I am or how to live or navigate in this world. I do everything that I do because I have been redeemed by the blood of the lamb. I have abundance because Christ died on that cross and I have, hold on, one more, redemption abundance and access to my father because of the blood that Jesus shed for me because he was willing to give up his life in order that I might have mine you know guys like I said those were my three points redemption access I mean excuse me redemption abundance and access and I'm going to explain each one of those but before I jump into that, you know, your girl is merging her Young Living Biz, which we're dealing with joy. I thought that this would be a great all to do because we are in the midst of the holiday season. Let me take a quick whiff. Love joy. It just gives me that boost to everything that I know to be true or everything that I've had to fight against today. The boost of energy that I just got from this bottle of joy. It is more than I can explain to you in simple words. But what joy does, it helps overcome deep-seated grief and depression. I know personally I've walked through my own battle with depression. It's been a while ago. And I had to take medication for it because... My mind wouldn't shut down. It just kept racing. Um, I have been a warrior and I've dealt with anxiety. But, but you know what? Honestly and truly, all of that, um, most of it was before my relationship with God. You know, what really, has, what really helped me um, to get to where I am today, you know, I, ha I went through counseling. And I know a lot of us don't like to go through counseling. Because it might suggest that we're crazy, but no, counseling never suggests that you're crazy. Actually, it it all it suggests that you're sane because you know that there's something mentally, you know, you're challenged with, and you want to get help. You seek somebody out in order to do that. Well, you know, if you've heard me, you know enough that I have daddy issues, which means my dad um, wasn't there, so I felt rejected and abandoned by him. Well, I went to this Christian um, counselor, did not know he was a, well, he was, I knew he was a counselor, but did not know he was a Christian, but he told me, he verified what I have always felt, and I think people dismiss when they tell you, well, you just need to get over that. 
what he validated for me, that was the greatest rejection you could ever feel is to be abandoned by a parent. And the thing about it is, is that my dad knows who I am. I mean, he stayed five minutes away from us all the time we lived in Boston. You know, we went to his company picnic every single year. So it's not like he didn't know me or he didn't have access to me. He just chose to to do something else. Now, he never got married during that time. He never, you know, we never had to compete with other kids for his affections or anything like that. But the fact of the matter is, I'm sure, you know, as, I, as, as I've grown in my Christian maturity and as I have read the scripture that we are to honor our father and mother, that I have to, I have to, stop, boo -boo. that's the cat, sorry. <laughs> um, I have to um, honor him even though he was not there for me because the, the Bible clearly says we are to honor our father and our mother and I will do that and I am here to tell you that if he needs me I will be there now our relationship we've we've tried to do this relationship thing but it's like really weird and I you know and I'm I'm, I'm just kind of done trying to deal with the weirdness of it you know if he calls me or if I have a, a thought process to call him I will but I'm not gonna you know put too much more effort into it but I said all that to say that even with all of that, even with um, with not having him there, I walked through depression. I mean, I, I really at, at a point in life wanted to take my life and my child's life because I was like, well, I definitely can't leave her here if I, you know, decide to check out, you know what I'm saying? So, but all of that was before my relationship with God. And you know that, that, Christian counselor who set in motion, you know, you need to find your church home, who validated my need and my loss of not having my father there has really helped me to grow. And I am very grateful for that. And so I want to let you know that because I'm redeemed, which means I have been bought back, that's what the Christ the cross suggests that Christ died on that cross to buy my life back. I have the abundance, which means I have the plentifulness of good, a good thing, the good things of life. I have prosperity. The Bible says that <clears throat> he died in order for us to have an abundant life. And I claim that I speak blessings and abundance so I can attract those things that are positive we know that we can send out negative energy and we'll get that so how about we flip that thing and send out um start attracting those things that we want to see in our lives so we can be a powerful vision for other people to know how to do this thing how to walk out this christian life successfully and i have access when christ died on that cross it brought the veil down there now is no no separation for me and my God. I can go pray to him, you know, whether it's audible or whether it's, you know, I'm saying in my head, I have access to him and I expect that my prayers will be answered and you should too. But now in order to have that done, you have to have a relationship with him. Now God will definitely answer, you know, prayers because he is your father. When Christ died on that cross, he died for everybody. <laughs> that. That cross is not a respect to a person's. Everybody has the same opportunity to come to him. And it is our responsibility, those of us that know, in order to plant that seed, we have to start talking to people and letting them know that God loves them, that they are covered by the blood of Christ, that by his stripes on that cross, we're healed. Okay? And so, as I was saying... With joy, let me take another whiff. Merging my young living biz with my passion, which is writing and speaking. And I would not be doing my due diligence if I didn't tell you what my books are. My first one is You Are God's Love Story. Daddy, You Can Hold My Hand. And Ordinary Princess. And all three of these books can be bought online through Lulu, Amazon, Barnes & Noble. 
Amazon, Lulu, Barnes and Noble. And there's another one. <laughs> but just put in, you know what I'm saying, PM Mathis and you'll be able to pull me up. So guys, you know, like I said, I, I am called to serve, to give value, to offer, um, ultimately, if I do nothing else, to offer life in Christ, okay? Now, we were, I was working with the scripture, Revelations 12, 11, which reads, They overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their life so much that they sh that as to shrink from death. We all have a testimony. We all have a story, and it is our responsibility to let other people know. What are we letting them know? That Christ is our savior we are covered in his blood he died on that cross for me and you and that his <clears throat> his life has the meaning to say to me that because he died i live okay now i'm going to leave you with this question and i want you to ponder it how do you show others you believe in your value now, I hope my series, this series that we're working through, Greatest Story Ever Told, this one, Oh, the Blood, you show people that you have value by understanding that you're redeemed, by understanding that you have abundance, by understanding that you have access to God. He gives you peace. He gives you love. He gives you joy in this time and in this um, this holiday season, let us be grateful, let us be joyful, and let us always remember to give God the glory, the honor, and the praise. Hey guys, this is PM Mathis, your global indie author distributor, and as always, 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 I want you to what? Be blessed. Okay guys, I'll talk to you later. Bye.